Hey folks, this is Nick, and today I'm going to talk to you about the derivation of the golden ratio, which we usually represent with the Greek letter phi. Now, one of the ways we can get the value of phi is by taking the limit of the ratio of successive terms in the Fibonacci sequence. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't worry, because I'm about to show it to you right here on paper. So, if you've heard of the Fibonacci sequence, you probably know that it's the sequence where we get each new term xn by adding the previous two terms xn minus 1 and xn minus 2. You can see that right here in the sequence. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, and so on. So, we can get a number very close to the golden ratio out of the Fibonacci sequence by taking any term and dividing it by the previous term. Now, this isn't really that accurate for lower numbers in the sequence. Like, if you look here, 3 over 2 would be one of these ratios, and that's going to give you 1.5, which isn't that close to the golden ratio. But uh, when you get to bigger successive numbers in the sequence, like 196,418 and 317,811, we're going to start getting pretty close to the actual value of phi when you divide those. Now, if we carry out this process infinitely long and get to the last two numbers in the infinite sequence, we would get the exact value of phi. But obviously, this is impossible. You can't get to the last number in an infinite sequence. That's just not going to happen. But we can do some algebra to see what the value of phi is going to be. So, we said that phi is equal to the ratio of any two successive terms in the Fibonacci sequence. So, we can say xn divided by xn minus 1 or xn minus 1 divided by xn minus 2 are both equal to phi, which means they're equal to each other. Now if you notice, we've got xn over here, and an equation that is equal to xn up here, which we can then plug into this equation here to give us a new equation that is equal to phi. That'll be xn minus 1 plus xn over 2 divided by xn minus 1 is equal to phi. And then we can simplify that a little bit, because those xn minus 1s will cancel. And we get 1 plus xn minus 2 over xn minus 1 is equal to phi. Now if you notice, the second term in that equation on the left-hand side, the xn minus 2 over xn minus 1, is the inverse of what we've got on the right-hand side, xn minus 1 over xn minus 2, which is equal to phi. So... We can rewrite this again as 1 plus the inverse of phi is equal to phi. And if we multiply both sides by phi, we can get ourselves a nice quadratic equation. Uh, phi squared is equal to phi plus 1. And then we can just rearrange that to phi squared minus phi minus 1 equals 0. So, now that we've got this in a quadratic form, we can use that algebraic superhero, the quadratic formula to get our exact value of phi. Now, uh, I'm sure you guys all know that the quadratic formula gives that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now in our case, a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 1, and c is equal to negative 1. So, if we plug those numbers into the quadratic formula, we end up with the solution that phi is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Now this gives us two separate solutions. Phi 1 is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Phi 2 is equal to 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. And we go with phi 1 because that gives us a positive answer. And phi 2 would give us a negative answer. So there you have it, the derivation of the golden ratio. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I'll, I hope to upload more videos about some different topics soon. Bye. Thanks for watching.